every time you add somebody new to your team, you're going to start this process over again, okay? And so let me give you these four stages, and you can kind of process it as, as I go through these. The first stage of team development is simply forming. And so when you're forming a team, uh, what's happening in the team is people are beginning to ask questions of themselves like, how do I fit? What's my role? Um, you know, do I really want to be a part of this team? Am I going to like this team? Uh, am I going to be accepted in this team? So they're going to be asking those kinds of questions of themselves. You're not going to hear them, but they're going to be unspoken questions. Uh, they'll ask things like, um, who's the real leader? And uh, is the leader competent? Because they're testing it out. And so as a leader, when you're in this forming stage, you want to make sure you share relevant information. You want to make sure you encourage open dialogue and you get the team to know each other. It's very important that people start feeling comfortable with each other. So do things to build trust and to build relationships. Maybe things like, you know, each week, hey, tell us about your story. Give us a three minute background, you know, about what was it like when you grew up and, you know, just tell us about yourself, you know. What, what was your favorite thing about high school? You know, those, those may sound trivial, but the truth is when people are given the opportunity to tell something about their story, they usually tell something that's kind of interesting, number one, and number two, it causes the rest of the team to draw to them. It creates an emotional connection. And so in this forming stage, it's very important that as a leader that we're doing things to help them get to know each other, to get comfortable with each other, to get comfortable with us and uh, provide some structure. They need to know exactly what they're supposed to do. That's why policies and procedures, written policies and procedures are so important. That's why systems are important. Um, and uh, just try to create an atmosphere and a climate of trust. That's the big issue, building trust within the team. So that's stage one. Eventually, somebody's going to test the system, okay? And you're going to start moving into stage two, which is storming. Something's not going to work the way it's supposed to. There's going to be a problem. A customer gets upset. Uh, you know, somebody doesn't carry their load, and it creates a problem for somebody else on the team. But conflict will just naturally happen because people are different. So if when you're in this spot, what do you, what do you think the unspoken questions are going to be? It might be questions like, you know, why do I have to do this? Uh, do I need to, to uh, do something different because, you know, this person's not doing their job or this is not working. What do I do? They're asking those kinds of questions. Finger pointing. Finger pointing may happen here too. Yeah. Oh, it's it's his fault because he didn't turn in the work order. Sure, that makes sense. Or they may say, "Who?" Maybe they're not in the middle of it, but they're saying, "Whose side am I going to be on?" You know. And they're always going to be looking at us as the leader, going, "How are you going to handle this?" Or there there are ways better. Yeah. Or there are ways better. Why you don't do it this way? My, this way is a lot better than mm -hmm. your way. So here is why one of the 10 components of an HR system is a conflict resolution process. You'll see it on your checklist. It's one of the things I want you to create. How do team members resolve conflict? Don't wait till it happens. Just tell them, hey, you're going to have conflict. We're going to have conflict. And here are the five steps we're going to follow. So. Everybody needs to know this, and you train your team in it before it ever even happens. So that then when it happens, well, let's follow the process. Because inevitably what's going to happen is they're going to come to you and go, well, you know what, I need to talk to you. And they're going to put the problem on you, and they're going to want you to fix the problem. When in reality, they need to just go take care of it. They can take care of it themselves, but they may not know how. And so sometimes you just say, you remember that conflict resolution process we talked about? I want you to follow it. So here's step one, here's step two, here's step three. So um, 
engage the team in problem solving and owning the problems and fixing the problems so they they don't all fall on you. Um, you're establishing some some norms here for looking at different viewpoints. You know, can we learn from each other? Can we brainstorm? Can we you know process together? And so there's a lot of teaching and training that has to go on with your team. Good strong teams don't just happen. They're led to be good strong teams. And that's our job as the leader. So if we don't move through this storming process in a healthy way, we will develop unhealthy ways of dealing with conflict. And what will result in your company is a culture of gossiping, backbiting, you know, backstabbing, mistrust. And so it's very, very important that we have a strategy for dealing with conflict. And we teach our team, this is how we deal with conflict here. It sounds kind of like a family, doesn't it? <laughs> If you do a good job here, uh, what you do is you move, well, actually, you move to this third stage either way. You, you go to norming. You establish norms. And you want them to be the good norms, not those bad norms I just mentioned. So that they go, this is how we function here. And uh, when you get to this stage, then team members are asking different questions. <coughs> They're asking questions like, what can we really accomplish? Maybe we could do something really extraordinary here. They start thinking, so to speak, higher thoughts of your company and what y'all can do as a team. And they're asking questions like, what, how close can our relationships get here? I mean, can we really develop deep trust and deep, deep relationships here? Because they're starting to think, this is, this is an amazing opportunity I have. And that's the kind of norm we want to create. But it doesn't happen without some storming and, and some education here. And again, if we don't do a good job here, the norms become the backbiting and gossip and all the junky stuff that we don't want and we've all seen at times. So your job and my job as leaders here in the norming stage is to talk openly about issues, uh, to encourage members to be a part of managing the team process, uh, to give positive and constructive feedback. It's very important that you create a culture where we can talk about what's working and what's not working. Um, and uh, delegation. Delegation needs to be a big part of that. And then the fourth stage of team formation is performing. And you can see, if they're starting to ask questions here like, what can we really accomplish? I think, we, what is it going to take to accomplish the vision that, that feels shared with us? And they're starting to think about that, and they're starting to take an issue with that. That's what creates a high-performing team. And so this is the process every team goes through. Every team goes through this. And again, I go back to the fact that when you bring somebody new into your team, you're back up here again. So number three, you could say...